All right, so I wanted to update you on gold. Big focus right now for me. This is where you want your eyes, in my opinion. This is where you want your money, too. You want your eyes and your money here. In my opinion, not financial advice, okay? But I don't think you can go wrong with gold. Look at this chart. Higher lows, higher highs, very strong. Not parabolic yet, though, so it's not too overextended. This looks strong. I don't even think there's going to be much of any, if any, profit taking. This looks good. Looking on the RSI, healthy RSI, not overextended, hasn't gone parabolic yet. Look on the MACD, still positive on the MACD, no curve at the end of it, no volume spike. Volume's actually kind of going down. We got lots of room to the upside on the daily to the upper. Daily Bollinger Band around 1963, then the upper weekly around 1952, and the upper monthly Bollinger Band around 1957. So give or take, the next resistances we're looking at are around 1960, and then we got a resistance around 1970, 1980 from back here, 1970, 1980 back there, and then of course psychological $2,000 and all-time highs. I believe it's possible we head straight to all-time highs. This move looks very strong to me. We got a triple bottom at the lows. A little bit of a fake out, uh, too, where we broke this low ever so slightly and faked out and just big move to the upside. What's key here is that there's declining volume on the way up. This shows that there's a lack of sellers, that there's a little bit of buying is going a long way. This little bit of buying, look how much uh, the bulls are getting. That means there's a lack of sellers. And can you blame them? Who's going to want to sell their gold right now? It's near all-time highs. It's one of the strongest charts. It's the best performing asset in the last year. The U.S. government is on the verge of a potential default. And even if they don't default and they just keep raising their debt ceiling, that's not good for creditors. Can they ever pay you back? So what does it matter what interest they're giving you? And if they're giving you high interest, that's a bad thing. Because look in countries that have high interest rates. They have very high inflation. Their currencies have seen hyperinflation. Turkey, uh, Argentina, those are two examples right there. Where their interest rates are high, but their inflation is much higher. Could that happen in the U.S.? Why not? They have so much debt. They owe everybody. And other countries around the world want to get themselves off of the U.S. dollar. Onto whether it be BRICS or China or uh, something else. It doesn't matter. I think there's going to be some sort of coalition. I think eventually there might be a one world currency. And if, if there was ever a one world currency... You know, it would probably be gold, or it's been gold, at least for all of time, all of human's time. Gold is always a one-world currency. Never mind. I don't want to get into all of this stuff more. You know what I'm talking about. Think about it. So, look at the price. It looks good. This is strong. All the dips, they're getting bought up. Over here, you saw 1896, 1901, 1911. Bulls are holding that $1,900 psychological mark. Just steady bull flag after bull flag. It's like a big cup and handle on the yearly. You got that huge volume last year. And what happens is when you get big volume like this, you saw it sold off initially for a while. What happened here, I think, is that there was a lot of paper gold sold onto the market. Or just a lot of gold was sold onto the market, paper or non-paper, whatever to try and suppress the price of it because they were worried about it breaking to all-time highs. It's not really in the U.S. best interest that gold is going up. The U.S. wants their dollar to be the reserve currency of the world. But if China and Japan and U.K. and other countries are dumping U.S. treasuries because maybe they're worried that the government can't even pay them or they're just losing value, and the U.S. government, they're dumping their own debt. They're sell trying to sell their own debt. So they're selling it, China's selling it, Japan's selling it, UK's selling it, uh, and they're on the verge of a potential default. This is huge. Gold is way underpriced right now. 
It is so significantly underpriced, it'll blow your mind. How many trillions of US dollars are there? Hundreds of trillions when you look at the stock market, the debt markets, the bond markets, the treasuries, everything. Hundreds of trillions. Gold is 12 trillion. And that's that's an estimate they think. 12 trillion. And this is something people hold. This is physical, tangible value. People hold, banks hold, they hold it in these big vaults. The governments keep buying more. Why are they buying? China's buying, Russia's buying, Turkey's buying. I think Iran's buying. You know, a lot of countries on that side. And just a lot of people are buying as well. People are buying. Indian people, they're buying at an alarming rate. They love gold. Indian people, they love gold. Chinese people, they love gold. And you got fool's gold over here. This is fool's gold. Make no mistake. I'm sorry. Okay. This is disgusting. People put it on a log scale to make it look good. You know. That's what the bulls, they try and put it on a log scale. Oh, don't worry. It looks so nice. Let's go to the, the, the other one back here. Uh, Coinbase. It looks much nicer when you do the log scale, huh? Yeah, it's a trickery of your eye, okay? It's not reality. This is reality, okay? This is reality. There is a lot of dead, lost money up here. People who were rich, who wish they sold at the top, who wish they could do it again. The masses want this to go up. How many people do you know are buying gold? They're not because they think it's boring, because they think they can't make a lot of money. That's why. You know why I like gold? Because there's very little leverage on the buy side, on the long side. People buy gold, you buy it. You don't buy gold with debt. Sorry. You buy jewelry, you buy gold gold coins bars a gold bullion to put in uh uh the you know those etfs where they store it for you you know people buy it and you hold it and there's only so much to go around okay but so people aren't really taking on mortgages or uh big debts or leverage or margin to to buy gold other than on the forex market typically for short-term trades so it's not propped up on leverage, whereas Bitcoin and the stock market and the real estate market, this is a big one, is propped up heavily on debt, on owed money, debt on top of debt on top of debt. Okay, gold is no debt. You know what? Bitcoin is debt too. You know why Bitcoin is debt? Because you need those miners. Those miners owe you. Those miners, everybody needs to keep this thing operating. Somebody, everyone owes everybody electricity to keep this thing operating what if the governments want to start taxing bitcoin network somebody needs to keep that network going gold owes you nothing gold is gold that's it it owes you nothing bitcoin you're owed you need miners there you need you need all kinds of things happening just in order for this thing to work it's debt is the system going to be able to afford itself, Bitcoin? It's literally losing money on each transaction, the whole system. That's why the price goes down. Because every transaction, they take a little fee and another fee and another fee. So even if money never leaves the system, it still goes to zero eventually. Because there's so many fees in between each transaction and the spreads and all of this kind of stuff. And, and the electricity, somebody's got to pay for that electricity, comes out of the system. In some way, which usually through transaction fees and or inflation or whatever else it is. Okay. But ultimately, you need more money coming in constantly in order for this price to stay propped up. Whereas other things, not necessarily the case. Not necessarily the case. This needs electricity to operate. And I don't want to say anything else. This is debt. Bitcoin is debt. Okay, that's a big debt. Electricity debt. Bang. Oh, carbon tax. Woo! Brutal. 
Bro, I don't want debt. Gold. Look at this chart. It's the most bullish. I think it's V-shape might even go straight to all-time highs. This might even go straight to all-time highs. Gold in the 1970s, it was 25 times your money. So you might think gold can't make you a lot of money. Who's to say this can't go to 50,000, 60,000, 100,000? Who's to say that? If we get hyperinflation, if the currencies if the government's default, this might even go even higher than that. This is money for all of history. I think this is a distraction. Like I said, this is debt. Bitcoin is debt. You are owed. That electricity, somebody's got to pay those bills. It's you guys. Somebody's got to pay those bills. Bad. I don't want to say anything else. Thanks for tuning in. Till next time.